One of these classes of functional RNAs uh, is known as the snRNA or small nuclear RNA. These uh, are the RNA components of spliceosomes, the large structures inside cells which can excise introns uh, to allow the exons uh, then to be joined. Spliceosomes thus determine the genetic message and thus the proteins which are made. This is very important. SNRNAs uh, vary in size from, say, 80 nucleotides long to 350, and they certainly seem to be important. Uh, certain functions of the spliceosome can be done with just the RNAs, and mutations in the RNAs can alter function. These, uh, al the alternate splicing, which is allowed at the spliceosomes, is an important source of uh, both protein diversity for evolutionary purposes and also for mutations. And so the SNRNAs, or small nuclear RNAs, perform a vital function in cells as a component of the spliceosomes, which splices the genetic message into functional bits. Another class of functional RNAs are the small nucleolar RNAs, or SNO RNAs. These RNAs can function uh, as parts of large uh, ribonucleoproteins with, you know, say two dozen uh, proteins and do a variety of functions in uh, a cell. One of the main functions that they have is to change nucleotides. We are taught that there are, say, four nucleotides in DNA and RNA, the thymine, guanine, uracil, uh, cytosine, and adenine. However, in reality, there are many more because those original nucleotides can be changed, can be modified to make special nucleotides in the ribosome, in tRNAs, etc., and that these modified nucleotides are thus vital for function. So snow RNAs have an important role in changing RNA to make it functional. It turns out, interestingly, that many of these snow RNA genes are within introns, so that after an intron is cut out, rather than being a useless you know, remnant which must be broken down, the intron then has function because within the intron is a snow RNA which then has its own important role. So interestingly, introns can on occasion have a function in containing functional RNAs. Might it also then be that originally the introns were the functional part of the genome and that the exons were non-functional? and over time the exons then developed the ability to code for the proteins which would help the RNA maintain its shape. Once again some of these questions which would date back to the origin of life are simply fascinating. We are discovering whole sets of small RNAs which interfere with genetic expression. These can be used to regulate genes by binding to genes which should not be expressed, binding to genes of foreign origin from uh, viruses to transposons, and so there are RNAs which can block genetic activity, and these are referred to as small interfering RNAs or SNR, I'm sorry, SI RNAs, and this mechanism is known as RNA interference. Uh, there are also microRNAs, very small RNAs, uh, which uh, can uh, perform these functions as well. So we're discovering a whole host of small RNAs, uh, very important in gene regulation. The replication of chromosomes at their ends requ uh, involves an enzyme called telomerase, which requires RNA in order to replicate the ends of chromosomes every time a cell divides. In female mammals, one X chromosome is inactivated so that both men and women typically have one functional X chromosome in cells. The inactivation of one of the two X chromosomes involves ZIST, X-I-S-T, a RNA molecule made by the X chromosome which will be inactivated. 
there are many other examples of small RNA molecules which never code for protein, but instead rather are functional and seem to be the end product of their genes. Since this is an area of very intense research, surely the number of functional RNA molecules known to work in living things will grow in upcoming years.